Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX, and today we are talking about these and why I've just bought another. So these are, well, what they call duplexes, although if I don't say the word diplexer at some point in this video, Hayden will shout at me. Check out Hayden's channel somewhere up there. Uh, but diplexer, duplexer, there are differences. These are technically diplexers. The reason for that is that a proper duplexer is what you would expect in a repeater system, which would be in band, i.e. it's splitting a frequency away from another frequency, which is in the same band. So you might have a two meter duplexer for a repeater where it's separating 600 kilohertz apart. Broadly speaking, that's about right. We're not gonna to get too technical today. So although these on them call themselves duplexers, they are diplexers. So what do these things do? Well, they split between frequencies. So if we have a look uh, at this MX72, on this side and on this uh, end type, uh, this is for, you're not going to read it, so I'm going to write it bigger, 350 to 460 megahertz. On the other side, on this PL259, uh, it is for, uh, what's that, 1.6 to 150 megahertz with a common point. So how would you use one of these things? Well, let's say, for instance, you've got this and you have a dual band antenna that you want to feed into two separate single band radios. So let's say you've got a, uh, a VHF UHF collinear, for instance, something like maybe an X30 from Diamond or similar. Um, you've got your coax coming in into the top here and then on this one you've got a two meter radio and on this one you've got a 70 centimeter radio and that would be a perfect use for one of these. Uh, you could also use it the other way around though. You could have one dual band radio coming in here to feed out to two separate antennas. So a dedicated 70 cents antenna, a dedicated uh, two meter antenna. So that's this one, this is a Diamond uh, MX72N. Um, they come in several flavors. The MX72, basically it comes down to what the plug is on the uh, 77 side. This one's an N-type, uh, hence the N. Um, it's not the only diplexer I've got here uh, because I've also got this, which is a Diamond uh, MX62. I've actually got a couple of these, although Maybe the other one actually is a, is a Comet version. But what this one does, similar situation, common at the top. And then it's got, on this side, it's got two PL259s. The difference here is that one side is 1.6 to 56 megahertz. The other side is 140 to 470 megahertz. So what would the use case for this be? Well, in fact, I used to use this very duplexer uh, with my ATAS or with the, when I had my FD857. Um, the idea being is that I could put the uh, ATAS in here uh, and then on the back of the 857, there's uh, two antenna sockets. One is for HF and six meters. The other is for VHF, UHF. And this also allows uh, DC to pass through. If you've got an ATAS, you can use that because the motorized control. That works really nicely, but you could also use this, say for instance, and this is how I use the other one I've got. It's currently plumbed in uh, behind the uh, sort of wall of the shack. But I've got another one that comes down from my Diamond V2000 and splits off six meters from my uh, two meters and 70 sems feed so that I can have uh, my FT8900 most of the time uh, plugged in on VHF UHF and I can have my six meter side of the antenna plugged into um, my HF radio for let's say six meters FT8 or whatever it happens to be 
but using the same antenna. So you might be thinking, well, you said at the very start, you've bought another one and I have. And let me show you what the new one is and why I bought it. So this is the one I've just bought, which is a Comet CF630. Um, picked this up used, um, I saw it advertised, I thought that's exactly what I want. Diamond also do a version of this. Uh, I think it's the, oh, I'm going to get the model number wrong. I'm doing it from memory. MX610, I think. Um, but anyway, the idea of this, and it's a little bit um, a little bit different, this one, in the fact that it mixes on a fly lead and it's got two sockets. That doesn't matter. Inside is what we care about. On this one, we have on one side 1.3 to 30 megahertz and on this side we've got 49 to 470 megahertz now you may be thinking well that's very similar to the last one it is except with the mx62 it this is shifting where the six meter side is so previously six meters was lobbed in with hf with the cf360 it's put onto the VHF side. Now, here is the reason why I wanted this, because as I've already said, I've already got the Comet version of an MX62 um, on the down feed from my V2000. So what I can do is I can uh, have the V2000 coming in here, and then on the side where the six meter side is, I can have that coming up into this uh, diplexer. Then on the other side, I can have an HF antenna. Uh, in the case it is at the moment, it is my uh, 10 and 17 meter end fed half wave. And that goes into here, which means when I plug this into the radio, which at the moment is the IC7610, uh, I have got two antennas with only one antenna socket and using this, basically I'm kind of using it as a switch, except I'm not because I'm not having to actually switch anything. The RF just knows where it's got to go. Is there some loss involved in this? A little bit. Do I care about that loss? No. Uh, does it work? A hundred percent. Um, and that's always been the thing is that I've always liked six meters. Six meters is a, is a fantastic band when sporadic E opens. Um, that normally happens in the late spring and, and early summer. But up till now, that's meant I've had to physically come into the shack and switch a switch in order to get uh, antennas onto the right radio. Uh, or I've had to you know, maybe put another radio in. Whereas, and that's particularly when I'm thinking about when I want to remote in. So I, I often leave my, my computer here in the shack running and I can remote in and do some like FT8 uh, remote controlling my computer. But obviously I couldn't do that if I couldn't get the antenna connected. By using the CF6, CF360, sorry, I'm able to do that without having to worry about having to touch any switches. That's why I bought this uh, diplexer. Yes, it says duplexer on it. And that's one use case for when a diplexer is really, really useful, in which case, in this case, I'm using two. Another use case for when you might want to use a diplexer, and we previously spoke about um, cross-band repeat here on uh, the channel. And in that video, I was mostly talking about radios which have that capability on board. However, there are other ways of doing it, perhaps with two radios, where you might take the output from one radio into the input of another and, and vice versa. And this would be a useful one of those if you've got a, a VHF radio and a, and a UHF radio sharing the same antenna for a cross-band repeater. There's, now these, because these are frequency dependent, um, you can be transmitting the one and receiving on the other at the same time. They are, will allow full duplex in that regard. Um, which is probably where they confusingly get their name from. Now I think about it, because you can transmit once, transmit and receive through them at the same time. That's only just occurred to me. Uh, but that's another th 
thought another use where you might need a duplexer or a di diplexer. The possibilities are almost endless. The frequency splits are almost endless when it comes to these things. There's lots and lots of applications for these. I have demonstrated to you one today, which I am quite happy about. Uh, I also need to thank the guy that I bought uh, this used diplexer from, a guy called Mark, M0DXR, uh, who, as well as the um, included with the diplexer, uh, a sticker for WRTC 2026, and also a little badge for WRTC 2026. Um, that's because Mark is uh, one of the chief organizers for WRTC. I will leave links to WRTC down in the description below, but that is going to look great on the back of my laptop. Um, and maybe I'll wear the pin badge in a future video. Who knows? But thanks, Mark. Uh, excellent service and uh, really appreciate it. If you've liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. If you haven't, there's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button. Also click that notification bell and you'll be told when I upload a new video. There's another video coming over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.